Hi, this is Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass with a closing market wrap for Tuesday, September 8th. Okay, guys, um, lots going on today. Lots of moving pieces. Let's see what we can find out by digging into the charts. A lot of technical events today. Uh, here we've got the SPY daily chart. If you remember, on Friday, they had parked it right on the 20 and inside this uh, rising channel that we had, keeping everybody in the ball game, bulls and, and bears alike, all guessing. Today, they dropped it down below the channel. Now, what that means is now SPY is on a daily sell signal, and we haven't had one of those in a long, long time. So, what that means now is our bias has to shift. Even if we think there's going to be a bounce or this is temporary or whatever you may be thinking, the technicals say we're on a sell signal. So from a practical standpoint, an everyday trading standpoint, we need to go into sell the rips mode. We have to assume that bounces will be faded now, we may turn out to be wrong, but that has to be our base case, all right? SPY did hold the 50, which is down here at 331. What we may see tomorrow, depending on what the cues do, is a back test of this trend line. Right in here at 342, right in that area. And at that point, we have to assume that it'll be rejected. Now, if we if we get that bounce and you try to get short against it, then of course your stop is just above. And if you're wrong and they reclaim this rising channel, then that would negate the sell signal. Uh, I hope you're following along there. And most likely, a lot of it will be driven by what the cues do. So let's go down to the 30-minute chart. You can see at the top on the RSI, we're down in the, in the bearish regime, under 50. The uh, PPO momentum as well is well down into the bearish mode. Today, after the initial drop, here's our opening gap above. SPY spent a lot of time between this 335 and 338 area, came back up, was not able to really enter this gap. And when it let go, we had identified this, uh, this open gap below, and then we got an immediate fill down to this uh, 332.80 area uh, where we closed. Now tomorrow, what we're hoping for, especially if you're out or you covered shorts, is we're hoping for a bounce. Any bounce back up into the 338 area is a chance to sell. Uh, then you would set your stop just above this 338. Assume it's going to get rejected. Come back down. If it doesn't, immediately flip bullish and look for a gap fill up to 342. That doesn't look like a lot, but that's four dollars. I mean that is a. I mean that's a nice trade in itself. So tomorrow, again, let's go over it again. If they bounce it to 338, my default position is sell the rips. I would try to get short right here against the gap. And if they pop it, take the paper cut, get long, and look for a gap fill up to 342, where I would be covering that long and then just uh, waiting to see you know, where they bring it down. If they don't bounce it and they, you know, open 
somewhere near the close tomorrow morning, any break of today's low is a signal to get short. And we've got an open gap down here, down to uh, uh, from 331 to 330, so that's about a dollar. And then we've got another level here at uh, 327.73 down to 326.50. Those would be logical targets on any follow-up downside move tomorrow. Um, I want to go back to the, the daily chart because I forgot to, to mention something. Remember we talked about, I think it was on the weekend video, if not on Friday, that 3390 was the SPX high back in February. Now we're trading 3330. We're 60 handles below the February high. For bulls to start feeling better, they've got to reclaim that. Otherwise, all this move, this move here, looks fake. Anytime, remember, anytime you, we drop back below into a prior trading range, the target becomes the bottom of the range. So right now, trading below the February high is a pretty bearish technical event. You would have expected that to hold and, you know, drive higher after the back test. That didn't happen. We lost it. So now we're 60 handles below. So keep that in the back of your mind. And, you know, although we're not trading XPX, we can still watch that level. And remember, that SPY doesn't really line up with all of that because of the dividends that have been pulled out since then. So this is a good number. This is a hard number. It's not going to change. 3390 was the February high. We've got to reclaim that for the bulls to, you know, start feeling a little bit better that they saved that February high and now they're back trading above it. But as it stands now, we're below. So that's, that's a bearish technical event. Okay. So we went over the 30-minute chart on SPY. We're hoping for a bounce, but we're prepared for a, a move lower. And this 327 aligns really well on the daily chart as well. If you uh, look back on that chart, that's a key support level. We spent a lot of time there on the daily time frame uh, back when it was trading at this level. So... This, this would be a target, and I would expect that to hold. Moving on to the Qs. Again, Friday, closed it right on the uptrend uh, lower channel line. Kept everybody guessing. Bulls and bears, if you had to pick a position, you had to carry that over the weekend and have that weekend risk. Anybody that was long was trapped. On the gap down, uh, I told you that I had a small, more or less a lottery pick, just a, a few contracts down here. That played out well. We moved down to the 50 that I thought would hold. Okay, we moved marginally below it uh, at the close, which was disappointing for me because I had given up my short positions but as it stands now it's basically held uh, i think we were 50 cents below it after hours so again now we're on a confirmed qqq daily sell signal have not had one of those i don't even think since the March lows. We might have had one back in, no, we didn't even have one in June. Uh, we've been on a buy signal the whole time, but now we're not. So the default position is sell the rips, not to buy the dips, okay? What we're hoping for is a pop where we can recycle shorts back in and see if the downtrend 
continues on. We could rally as much as up to this 285 area. That would be a prime place to put out a short. A back test of this channel line from below that gets rejected here at this 285, that would be perfect. If we lose the 50 tomorrow, that's going to likely trigger a lot of institutional money to get out. Oftentimes, the momentum quants and you know all these funds, they have mandates to be long above the 50 and either be out or short below it. So if we lose the 50 tomorrow, there's a good chance we're going to get some type of a flush move that's going to, you know, trigger all these shorts to get out. And we want to be involved if that happens. It'll probably go fast if it does. But that's, that's your key on the downside. Let's look at the 30-minute chart. It'll be a lot clearer. Here in the RSI, trapped below the uh, 50 midpoint line, operating in the bearish regime. Same thing with PPO, well below the zero line. We're operating uh, in the bearish regime for momentum as well. So we gapped down. Here's our opening gap. We made an initial run, which failed. Came back down, lost 275, and eventually uh, lost this opening print here and closed dead on the lows at 270. Now tomorrow, what I'm hoping for, because I don't have a position, I'm out, I'm hoping for a bounce. And just like SPY, if it got to 277.50, which was the high for today, I would be putting out some shorts and be ready to flip long for this $5 gap fill up to Friday's close. That would be a nice trade, but I'm assuming that will get rejected. So I want to try a short at 77.50, but being prepared to go long if it enters the gap. If they open tomorrow morning in or around 270, we got to be prepared for 270 to break and for an extended down move to fill this gap down to 265 and possibly get all the way down into this 261 area tomorrow. Another eight or nine dollars, certainly within the realm of possibility. Because remember just what we said on the daily chart, this would be a clear breach of the 50 EMA on the daily. That's going to trigger a lot of sell signals uh, for these institutional funds. And they could put in a real nasty flush move. I hope that that doesn't happen tomorrow because I'd like to, you know, get in short at higher prices. But we'll just have to see how that goes. I did not. I was thinking with these two candles here against 270. I thought they would try to run it up before the close. Obviously, that didn't happen. I was wrong. And I, I wish I was still had a position short, but I don't. So now we have to see how they open uh, tomorrow morning. IWM. little different picture here they gapped it down went right to 150 and that's been the line that we've been looking at for days here after this uh, sell-off we went down uh, last week on friday they ramped it up into the close gapped it down today had a little momentum overshoot down to 149 
they almost filled this gap. I have them a little bit short, but then they sold off. Tomorrow, anything below 150 is a sell, clearly, clearly, clearly. Anything below 150, you got to get short. Look for a move down to 147.50, and then below that, I'll have to check my daily chart. I'm sorry, I don't have that. There's an open gap down here, I believe, from 145 to 142. There's a big gap. But this 147 and a half, we spent a lot of time there months ago. At least it seems like months ago. I would expect that to hold on an initial tag and maybe get a little bit of a baby bounce. But IWM has been outperforming. It's still going down. But you can see it in the daily charts that... We didn't lose the Friday low here in the other charts we did. So this 150 is holding for now, but I wouldn't be afraid to short that. If Q's and SPY go down, this is going to go down with it. It may not be as fast as the others, but it will be a good short. There's no way if QQQ and SPY are red that this is going to go green. I would be looking to fade any kind of bounce you got here, especially if you saw SPY and QQQ start to roll over. But definitely have 150 in the crosshairs for uh, tomorrow. One thing I wanted to show you that's, I think, really important. This is my extremo meter on puts and calls. And I'm not going to go through this in a lot of detail, but above the red line is excessive call buying. And you can see this huge cluster of call buying that's been driving the market higher really since June. Below the green line is excessive put buying. And if you go back into time, this chart has been very good at calling bottoms. It nailed the bottom back in March. It nailed the 2018 low back here on extreme put buying. We haven't seen any, any excessive put buying so far. And that tells me there's a lot of room for further downside. What you want to see to buy the dip is you want to see this plunge. You want to see everybody and their brother piling into puts just as the market's making a low, just like they did back here in March, just like they did back here in December uh, 2018. We haven't seen that yet. Actually, today, VIX did not reflect the sell-off. I would have expected that to rocket higher. It was marginally higher, but not a lot. Nobody's scared yet. You see that in the VIX. You see that in this uh, put-call ratio. If you're motivated to buy the dip, what you want to see is a flush where everybody buys these puts right at the bottom. And that's how, it, that, that's how it's always worked in the past. All these red lines back here in time marked bottoms on extreme put buying. And that's what I want to see in terms of preparing to reverse and go long. But as it stands now, I definitely want to keep a short bias because I think there's a lot more to go just from the simple fact that nobody's scared. Nobody's buying puts. And I think until they do, we go lower. SMH, 
semiconductor ETF on a clear sell signal on the daily. We've got this level right here at 162 and a half. We're already trading below the 50 right here in green. And we're at this shelf of support here at 162.50. I really, really like this setup for tomorrow and the days ahead. I want to be ready at 162 to get short. I think we see a move down to this. At least it's open to this 150 area. Very little technical support in between this 162 and a half and 150. I really like that short. Uh, so alarm 162 and a half in your platform. Maybe we get a little bounce tomorrow, but then as it comes back through, that's one I would want to nail is SMH below 162 and a half looking for a sustained move down towards 150 with not a lot of technical support between here and there. Of course, the 200 will be moving up during that time. I would be looking to cover if we were so lucky to get down into the 150 area. I'd be looking to cover it there, uh, depending on what, of course, everything else is doing. Let's move on to FANG quickly. I wanted to show some of the daily charts of the FANGs because they are so, so important. Facebook, all things considered, is holding up really well. We've got a trend line off the lows. Still have not approached it yet. We're, we're hanging above. We've got the 50 EMA lining up with this trend line. I think you're going to see some buyers there around uh, one, or excuse me, 260, 261, 262. I think they would try and bounce it here and save this trend line. But if they don't, then it's down here to 250 with a nice gap below that. Look for that test of the 50 in this trend line and look for a bounce there. Moving down to the 60 minute chart of Facebook. Uh, they tried to run it up after the open and then closed back on the lows. Here's a little gap right here that needs to be filled. But then here's that 261 area and you can notice this high volume over price bar. That's going to serve as nice support, I would think, at least on a first run at it. So if you're thinking long, if you're bullish, I think right here at 260 with this high volume over price bar meeting up with the trend line and the 50 EMA on the daily, that would be a place to try along on Facebook course set your stop just below if you're wrong and if you are wrong then we go lower we go into this 256 range and then of course we've got a huge gap at uh, 249 Apple anybody that bought the split is dead plain and simple buying up here at 135, 137. They've already lost 20 bucks, 25 bucks down here on a clear sell signal on the daily. Any back test of this trend line, I think ought to be sold. Still above the 50, but if that 50 fails, we're coming back in here to 100. And you can see there's a gap there as well, down to around 95. If the ball keeps rolling downhill, there may be a bounce here at 100, but I would expect this gap to fill. So key off the 50, be looking to fade 
any bounces back up to the trend line for a back test. Perfect place to try and get short. I think there will be a lot of people that are trapped that will be thankful to get five, six, seven bucks back and sell out right here in the 120 area. Uh, I would be looking to fade that. Here it is on the 30 minute chart. Uh, bounce, I didn't put in the gap here, but there's a gap above, uh, let's see, about uh, 118 up to 121 or so. But the real key is holding this low at 110. If it can't do that, it's coming down to fill this gap. And then here's the big gap that we talked about down at 100, down to 95. If this starts cascading, if we never get the bounce, you'll probably see price down here at uh, 95 uh, eventually. I don't have the daily on Amazon. Closed dead on the lows, but it did hold this 3151, which was a line that we had marked way back here and has done a nice job informing us of how we want to be positioned. So tomorrow, just like the other ones, any bounce up here towards 3200, 3250, I think ought to be sold. There's always the possibility of this gap fill, but if it does, I'd be a seller. And if tomorrow this 3150 area fails, we're coming back down here to 3050, $100 lower, and then we'll have to see what happens. Uh, I'd want to pull up the daily chart. I think uh, this 2975 was important on the daily chart, but that's down the road. Tomorrow the key is 3150. Above it, you can look for a bounce higher, but at the end of the day, that rally fails and it rolls back over. So if you're active trading Amazon, you can make a lot of money here if we get a bounce. But then I'd be looking to cover and going back the other way. I think it fails. I think uh, this isn't any different than any of the other ones. Uh, bounces are to be faded until price can prove otherwise. And it hasn't done so yet. Got to be open to the possibility that it can, but I think there's farther to go on the downside. Microsoft, again, clear daily sell signal. We actually got it Friday and I missed it, but it was pretty close to this trend line. Now we're below the 8, 20 and 50 day. We settled in here at the lows against this 202.50 level. You can see that was a level that we spent a lot of time at uh, in these, you know, in the month of July and early August before it ramped up got to hold that level in my eyes. If it doesn't, you're looking at 196.50. And if that fails back here to the original breakout at 190, I think there'll be a slew of dipsters right there at 190. And if you're, you know, if you've been looking for a place to get long Microsoft, that would be a logical place to try. And I would be a motivated buyer right there at 190. Pretty close to the 200 that'll be rising. I think that holds at least initially for a sizable bounce, depending on you know what the market is doing. But any bounce here, especially if it got up, got back up towards 215, that was the high. On Friday I would be looking to fade that I think it's I think this whole thing this whole fang complex I think more air is going to come out of it the question remains do we see a bounce first or do they just take it down immediately 
So here's your key levels, 202.50, 196.50, and then 190 is ultra key support. Here it is on the 30 minute or 60 minute chart. Same thing lines up. I don't have the 190 uh, drawn in here, but you can see the levels right here. There's a little level at 200, but I think if the low of today doesn't hold, I think we're going to come back into this 196.50 area. Google, I haven't been following really closely. It held the low, but finished right at it today. I think in all likelihood, it comes down to test this 1505. We do have the big gap above. If price were to rally, here is logical resistance right here at this 1555 type area. If it were to break in the gap, it's probably going to fill up to 1580. If you're motivated and you're an active trader in Google, I would be looking to fade that. If they can't hold this tomorrow, they're going to come into 1505 and then 1490 and then lower from there. Netflix held up pretty well today. If you were trading this, see, here's what I'm talking about. It rallied in to this key resistance area at 520 and rolled over. That's what I'm expecting in the other names. Here, here Netflix did a perfect example of what I've been talking about. It, you know, it opened low, it rallied, came up to resistance and failed and then dropped back down. If you had gotten short in this 520 area, you're almost $15 to the good already. And see now it's on its downward, you know, having made that test, I would expect this uh, to remain weak and come back down to eventually retag this 485. And that's your key support. Anything below 485 is coming way back. And that'll be dependent mostly on what the cues do, what the overall market does. But this held up pretty well, all things considered today. I would have expected it uh, to be a little weaker. Tesla, here's another one. Anybody who bought the split is way underwater. Uh, topped out at 500. Now it's testing 325 down at the 50 EMA on a daily sell signal. If you see the 50 EMA and 325 fail, I think you got $50 to the downside. You can see this 275 has the big volume over price bar. You can see the time spent here knocking around between 325 and 275. If it loses the 50 and 325, that's a good place to get short and look for 275. I think you can find that. I think on any bounce, any bounce at all, I think you're going to have a lot of motivated sellers of all the people that were trapped up here uh, buying the split. Uh, those guys will be grateful for any bounce that they get. And I expect this to go lower and eventually find 275. Last chart here. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I had the 60. I'm sorry. I guess I don't have that. So we'll wrap it up there. Just to recap, we've got fresh daily sell signals. The first ones we've had really since the March lows. I think that has to be respected. I think our outlook has to change to instead of robotically buying the dips because that always works out to sell the rips and make price proof that we're wrong. And I think that's the key. So my bias now is lower, hoping for a bounce that I can fade, that I can get in at higher prices. I think it's all still going to be driven by the cues. 
I think more air needs to come out as evidenced by the fact that nobody's buying puts yet. We've got to see some panic. We've got to see a flush. At that point, if we lose to 50 and we get some massive red bar to wash everybody out and get everybody really scared and buying puts, then we can talk about and position ourselves for a buy the dip opportunity. But we got to be really careful because still, even at this point, the vast, vast majority are still long. And if all those people get it in their mind, like a WTF moment, hey, wait a second, buying the dip isn't working anymore. I've got to get out. I've got to lock in my gains, whatever they are. I've got to get out. Then you might see the ball keep rolling downhill. We'll just have to see. But we don't want to jump the gun because September is a notoriously volatile month. We've got the FOMC next week. We've got debates coming up. Uh, we've got all the political stuff. We've got um, the fiscal package that they're still wrestling with. So there's a lot of moving pieces. We got to be careful. But I think having a bearish bias is the right side of this trade. If we can get some good trade location and ride it lower, I think we're going to be looking good uh, in the days ahead. Okay, guys, let's wrap it up there. I will be poking around tonight and looking for some individual trade opportunities. I will get those to you uh, if I find some, some good ones to offer. If you like the content, please hit the like button and subscribe. Over in the show notes are links to my content at the blog and where you can register to get all my content in your inbox. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.